Each and every day, enjoy the Simple Six menu at Subway. An entire made-for-you meal featuring one of six six six-inch sandwiches like the Italian BMT or Black Forest Ham. With any bag of chips and a 21-ounce drink, all for only $6. Subway. Eat fresh. The BS Report is a free-flowing conversation that occasionally touches on mature subjects. The BS Report. The BS Report with Bill Simmons. Welcome to the BS Report, taping this Tuesday afternoon. Zach Lowe from Grantland is here. We have a league press rankings, two-part column on grantland.com that you can uh, read. It's up. And Bob Valgaris. It's up. Our favorite gambler slash NBA Twitter slash coach critic slash, I don't know, savant. What? what what would be the last down there? I don't fan. know. I would say fan. NBA fan. Fan. I do love the NBA. You do love the NBA? You don't have a team? You don't nope. have a favorite team? Nope. You float around? You go to a lot of Clipper games? I do go to a lot of Clipper games. I actually went to a lot of Heat games the last few years, too. Probably more Heat games than Clipper games, I think. Those days are over. Yep. Did you wear white T-shirts? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Never wore a white T-shirt. Okay. Never. I would... I, I don't know. I didn't... I don't, I don't, I don't have much white. I'm not going to wear, like, white... People wear white pants and white T-shirts to go to a Heat game. It just seems a little crazy to me. You gotta walk around Miami in like white. Seems a little bizarre. It's, it's an interesting place, Miami. Yeah, it's not like it's a different place. It's its own place. Yeah. It was weird. I I was anti Miami for the LeBron era, and then by last year, I was like, you know what? Pretty good home court advantage. You know, when that when yeah. the fans want to bring it, they can kind of get him going, and then they rolled over against San Antonio. So now I don't know what to think. No, I don't know that but, that was necessarily anything to do with the fans. Was, it didn't it just ran to a buzzsaw. But the fans, fans yeah. are good. Fans were good up until the point where they realized something. Was I offered going up. someone at the start of last season a ridiculous amount of money for his court sides, for like the right to own his court sides, and he turned me down and laughed. And then I was like, you know, LeBron might not even sign. And he's like, LeBron's signing back. Where is he going to go? <laughs> I, caught them all I, I, saved, I, got, I got saved there because I would have just been sitting there with like <laughs> lifetime <laughs> Miami Heat season tickets to watch Dwayne I, Wade deteriorate before my eyes. I never really thought about it until I remember game four. A lot of the fans were leaving with like seven, eight minutes left. And I think I even said it on TV after the game that I just like, yeah. that might have been it for him in Miami. Like, it, yeah. it can't be ruled out. I certainly, my money would have been on him coming back. But at the very least, I, I would have stayed and applauded because it was pretty obvious at that point the series wasn't coming back, I didn't think. Yeah, second half of game four, I think both the fans and the Heat players realized we can't win this, or we can't win this series. Yeah. You know, they're, just, they're just tearing us apart. And, right. And if you went into their, I went to the locker room after Game Five when they lost, when the series was over, and I was like, me and one other guy were in there because everyone was with the Spurs, and it's like they were not. I've said this before, like they weren't pissed. Like you expect, like you know, just depression, and they weren't like happy, but there was a sense of like, I'm glad this is over. Yeah, they were like, resigned to yeah. the four straight wars. Yeah, you guys both kind of like the Spurs in that series. I like the Spurs a lot. I went yeah. on the LeBatard show and said, Spurs. "You did? I did. <laughs> I said there were Spurs. I bet they didn't enjoy favorite. that." No, they didn't mind it. No. My batard hung up on me the other day. Yeah. Literally hung up on me when I suggested that, that there is a chance. That I, I said it would not surprise me if I missed the playoffs this year. I, I, I said I think they'll, I would bet on them being like 6, 7, 8, but it wouldn't shock me at all if they missed the playoffs. Basically, I don't like court. this team. They won't have home court, I don't think, in the First People talk about them possibly. like they're a lock for a top five seed. Like, I just don't think they're that good. No. There's not that many great teams in the East. I mean, there's like a pretty big drop off after the top four teams. Yeah. So it's possible that they're just in that mix. Yeah. But I mean, they're basically going to ride Chris Bosh all year. I think they're in the 6-8 to eight range, assuming they're healthy. Yeah. But I think they're also the best bet not to be healthy. Yeah. And that's a team like Wade was playing 54 games last year. What was it? That was the number, so right? Yeah. No back-to-backs at all. And now he's going to be playing, they would need, I think, 72 to 75 for him. to. I'm be not even team. sure that he really even matters that much anymore. Like, I mean, I'm not saying he's a terrible well, player. Well, if he doesn't matter anymore, then they're, they're not making the they're, Yeah, well, I, I don't... I mean, I don't, I don't, the thing is, there's just so many teams in the East that are just not even trying to make the playoffs. Like, they're going to try to make the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, you know, Philadelphia's not trying to make the playoffs. Boston's not trying to make the playoffs. Milwaukee's probably not trying to make the playoffs. There's three teams right there that you can just rule out. And then after well, Miami that, doesn't have their pick. So, well, I just mean they're... No, but I mean, they, like, yeah. they, they have incentive to do everything they can to make it, I think. Right. The alternative is... That's just how, that's and they also out, wouldn't... Right? And they just yeah. wouldn't tank anyways. Just no. because they... I don't, I, don't think, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's set in that they're not a good team anymore. I think they know LeBron's not there, but they still feel like they've got a decent squad. I mean, it's pretty hard to go from making the finals three years in a row and then... Four. Four. Four years in a row and then being like, okay, time to rebuild. It's, I don't... Yeah. They're, you know, they didn't 
on the offseason they didn't try to rebuild. So. At least they got Wade for just two years. Right. That's the saving grace of their offseason to me, that they didn't give him, like, the massive four- or five-year contract right. they gave Bosch, which I think uh, the Bosch contract, I think, will be fine. You know, Bosch contract as is the, fine. As the cap goes up and all. Yeah, I think it's A fine, Wade sure. contract like that would have been a disaster. I'm fine with the Bosch contract. Are we sure he's still an all-star? Yeah, oh, yeah. not even close. Okay. I mean, if you look at the way he's played when LeBron's been out and Wade's been out, there's like a bunch of games. He played against Atlanta, I think, three or four times in the last two years where he was like the only player who was playing. Yeah. And he basically carried them in those games. He's played really good when he's been the focal point of their offense. He had, Really good. He had that one game in Portland, remember, last year where he hit a three at the buzzer right. to win the game. Yeah. It was yeah. one of those games where they, right. I think both LeBron and Wade yeah. set out. Yeah. And it was like you could tell it meant a lot. To They've him. performed. Like, That's right. I'm right. still. I'm They've still performed still. really well when LeBron and Wade have been out and Bosch has been the guy and they played games. I mean, obviously they're playing teams that are thinking this is, well, give me, oh, LeBron's not playing. How could a team get up for that, right? The opponent, they have that advantage going for them. But in general, he's a good player. I mean, he's, 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 he was forced to play a role. It was a difficult role for him in terms of the type of role he had to play with LeBron handling the ball a lot. LeBron in the post, he was kind of away from his, his favorite spots on the floor. Mm. But he adapted pretty well. And when he goes back to the type of role, I think, that suits him in terms of from an individual standpoint, I think he'll go back to the way he was when he played for Toronto. That's my fear, though. All right, so number one, it's year 12 for him. Like, secretly, a lot of miles. As Year 12, he's played every season. He just played four straight 100-game seasons, basically. Two, Run, and running around a running lot around. the way they play defense. To his stats, and I, I like to look at big guy stats because certain things can go down and they don't come back. Rebounds, free throw attempts. Like, he he didn't rebound last year. I think a lot of the rebounding. His free throws didn't go, went way down, too. I think a lot of the rebounding, though, is 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 the style that they're, like, he mentioned the style that they're playing. And he was also. But that's the style they're playing offensively. It doesn't. No, no, I mean in defense. defense no, I mean in defense. I mean, I mean like defense. the trapping. Yeah, yeah. The right. He's like out of the way at half court and teams yeah. are trying to. And because they're so, they, they, they play such an aggressive trapping defense, teams are taking quick hits to the basket. The ball's not sticking a lot when you're trying to play Miami, so the ball's moving a lot. So you're constantly with your back to the to the rim instead. I mean, there's an answer for all of this, right? Like that's an answer. You also have an answer for well, they're going to rely on him more. Last year he drifted out of games because right. he didn't, you know, he was wasn't playing engaged. 25 feet from the yeah. basket. They wanted him to shoot threes. I get all that, but we still haven't seen him be Toronto Chris Bosh in a couple of years. Right. And other I wonder if he can if he has a 22 and 10 in him anymore. The other thing I want to say about rebounding is rebounding isn't. How good you are at rebounding the basketball has very little to do with how many rebounds you actually get yourself. How good you are at rebounding is a lot of times if you're boxing out the other team's best player and now you've got LeBron or someone else coming and getting the ball. That's re like If your team gets more rebounds when you're on the floor, that's way more indicative than you actually getting the rebound. Mm -hmm. That's, the, that's like the... The Roy Hibbert rebounding totals to me are he gets hammered for that and like he's not yeah. quick off the ground he can't jump but if you, they rebound better when he's on the floor right and he's freaking huge right. and he boxes out diligently takes up space right. and, and like and the that, opposite of that is like a JJ Hickson who's just like jumping and stealing right. everyone's rebound. and the other thing is is like, is like mm. if you're actually actively guarding your guy who's taking the shot it's hard, it's hard to get rebounds because you're but some guys like someone like Rodman for instance he wouldn't even really guard his guy as soon as his guy could take a shot he just go off and they get the rebound. And now you're, you're giving up a bunch of open shots because you're He took a lot of rebounding. criticism for that. And Kevin Love is Kevin another Love. guy yeah. that takes criticism. Yeah, those are like re Hickson, he's, Love. Somebody's driving down the lane and he's drifting off his guy in case there's right. a rebound. And yeah. Or even when his guy shoots, guy. it's just like a quick contest and then turn around. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't try and get in his He's face. like yeah. the rebound whore equivalent of, can you say whore? Is that a lot? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Uh, of the Rajon Rondo assist whore. That's like the combination of, of that. Sort All right, of I'm thing. obviously I have to defend my, my Celtics dudes. <laughs> that was a recent trend with him. That was only the last, that was post-2012 when he started. Kind of, the 2012-13 the, the, the year season. he had the assist streak going was, that the was most horrible. disgusting I can't display of like, basketball. That was that was it was amazing how many horrible. Celtics fans defended him. He'd be going in for a layup yeah. just and just kick like, the, ball the ball out. Kick the ball like a the problem was that. Brandon Bass two-point contested a two-point That was horrible. Shot. Fast breaks where he'd be, there would be oh. no one in front of him, oh. and he would like jump and pass it back. Yeah. My issue is after about a month of it, teams were actually scouting him that way, and they were telling their players, when he drives, just just jump off right. and play the pass because he's not going to shoot. Yeah. And he was still trying to pass after that, and I, I didn't like that. Right. But Rondo's a complicated, interesting guy. He is. He's very mercurial, and he's, uh, he's complex, as you said. You're, yeah. I'm not a big Ray John Rondo fan. I was a big Ray I was going to ask. Fan. I have been in the past, and I was a big Rondo fan the year they lost to the Lakers. I yep. felt like he was probably their best player for a lot. Oh, yeah. Of, for a, a he outplayed LeBron in a playoff series. Yeah. He's um, a monster playoff series. But I'm just not a fan of, like, any player who 
you know, puts the individual stuff. And maybe it was a case of, okay, my team sucks, so I'm going to take what I can. But I think you can, I don't know, I think just setting a good example for the rest of the players that um, a team win is more important than, you know, your assist totals in some ways. I think the assist, I mean, I think he took the assist or thing, like, to, I have never seen anything like that before. That, to me, was just so insane. So if Love is the rebound whore and Rondo is the assist whore, then who's the scoring whore? Um, well, there's different types of scoring whores, I guess. There's like, <laughs> I like the guys who score like in garbage time. Those are like the guys who like, yeah, like the meaningless points. Those are the guys who are the guy. The guys that do it during the game don't really bother me too much. But um, like Randy Foy used to always irritate me because you could see him. His eyes already has big eyes to begin with, but his eyes would somehow get bigger. <laughs> they would someone get bigger when the team's down like 14 points with like a minute left in the game. That's just like this is my time to shine right here. He'd be rolling the ball forward. Yeah. If someone inbound the ball, he'd be, you'd see him like rolling it so the clock doesn't. You could see his teammates are just like, what is this guy doing, you know? But yeah, so Randy Foy was probably the all-time. I think he watches. More I watch the end of games. Both of us no, but I watch the games that everyone else changed the channel. Like right. people are changing the channel because well, you have vested interest. Yes, you, those are the games. You've that been I known to place it better too. And I get life. irritated when I'm, a, I'm about efficiency, man. When, when there's a blowout, I'm done. I'm checking out. I'm going to another game. I am too. That, that there's still there's still territory for you. Right. To I'm afraid to say. I'm afraid to say who the the scoring whore. The most famous scoring horse. I'm afraid well, to. I'm afraid to we say. We all know it. who it is. We just right. Well, it's, it's the it's, fan base after us. Yeah. It's Kobe Bryant and Russell Westbrook. I think those are the two. Russell guys. Westbrook. Russell Westbrook is yeah. He likes. I mean, it's not a bad thing because he's good at it. But Russell Westbrook really has the best pure score in the league on his team. And he take. I'm not saying it's a bad thing because I think a lot of the way their offense is structured, he's just doing what he has to do to get his team scoring. You're pro Westbrook. Non-structured. All three of us yeah. are very very pro Westbrook. I'm pro Westbrook. I would like to. I'm not sure, but I'm not sure Russell Westbrook could actually play for a coach with a structured offense and be mm. as effective as he is. That's a good point because he just. I mean, he's not going to run like endless pick and rolls and like distribute the ball and do all these things like draw and then kick to a wide open three point. He's just not going to do that. He's an attacker. He's a, he's he's. It is funny to try and picture him like taking dribble handoffs from Boris Diaw and like, right. You know, yeah. going on to the next thing in the offense. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny to picture him doing that. I've never it would done be, that before. It would be interesting. I think it's funny how like in the basketball community, there's you know former coaches and people like the certain players who value certain types of guys. They all like Westbrook. They're all like in on just him as a competitor. Like the people value like competitiveness. Right. You have to. He's like value ten that. out of ten on competitiveness. That's why he's so enthralling to watch. Is because yeah. like he should really. He probably has four shots a game that he needs to trade in for something else, right? But and he'll, like, ne- he's some never going to change. And some of them will come in crunch time where he'll just like dribble up, pull up nineteen foot or miss, and you'll be like, I can't believe he's taking them out of the game. And then he'll get this like unbelievable offensive rebound, right. leaping over dudes, falling out of bounds, kicking it out to someone while he's falling. And it's just like, oh, that's why that's Russell Westbrook. He's going to make up for it at some point. What's amazing to me is 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 that when he came out of college, that Presti actually saw him as a point guard, which I don't think a lot of people would have. Yeah. A lot of people would have looked at what, what, what does he do? He's not really a two, and he's not, he's like, people might have thought he was like a six-man type, scoring type, instant offense guy, but they've turned him into a point guard. Or, work. or a defender. I think that's what he was supposed to be, and I think that's right. actually been, his, like, a big, I think he's been a disappointment defensively. I don't know, you may have, you, you I think he have, can defend, I think he, he can, can, he can, can defend, defend when, I think the thing that he does is he goes for a lot of steals. Yeah. Which um, hero defense? He's yeah. always jumping around. He's like hopping around. It's too much. Yeah. He's, I'm not a fan of the guys who are out of position on defense to begin with. I'm a fan of the guys who like stay in their responsibility. Um, but I mean, you can't deny the fact that if if, if it's like a end of game possession and he has to lock in on someone, I think there's very few it, players his, that are better at defense. His physicality is just yeah. overwhelming. For if you're like Chris Paul, you're six foot one seventy. Like that dude is just overwhelming. Yeah, it's too much. That's the guy Nash mentioned when we were talking about people who are nightmares to play against for him. Could you imagine cool. being Nash like, and having to like play against Westbrook? Somebody's it's like cool. playing it's a football <laughs> player. It's like playing. It's a ridiculous. Game. Yeah, having that guy, having to guard that guy, and having him guard you. For your dream player, purpose. your dream player from like a hoops IQ, what they bring to the table, what they care about is Kawhi. Yeah, I mean, there's you other love players. Kawhi the most. I, like, I don't know about the most. If you were, if all the no. players were hanging off a cliff and you could just save one player, you would save Kawhi. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> probably. You <laughs> probably wouldn't. You know, I don't think so. I love Come Kawhi. On, you loved him, Kawhi, when yeah, the yeah. Finals MVP. I you did. Yeah, been, I was very you happy. were praising him for years. Well, yes, I was. But there's other guys too. Like I loved Paul George until last year, and then I don't yeah, know what happened true. to him. He lost his mind. I don't that's know. True. He just literally, like, he started he wearing, he's like dressing like Prince. You and I were having early, kids. You and I were early on the Paul George is better than Mellow 
Van I was the guy who got Paul George and also I did. I still, I'm telling you, I started it the year they played yeah. the Knicks. And he was for yeah. a while. He people was. didn't know people, and then all these people were writing. Oh, and they started paying attention, and then. It, but you know why though? Because pe- most fans follow the league, and they just follow offense. And they don't, they don't watch even, it. They don't even the discount yeah. the others. The defense is like not even like. It's like when Kobe got all defense that year, and you and I went nuts. So the other we were guy like, would, do people watch basketball? Yeah. The other guy I would say would be Andre Iguodala. He's oh. been a big favorite of mine for a long time. I mean, it's it's near the end, unfortunately, for him. I think. Possibly. I mean, he's he's going to morph into being a role player, like almost like Pippen in those kind of 2000 to 2002 Portland years. Pretty Remember? good role. Oh, and the Portland. You know, like years. the like the tail end of the Portland where he became. I don't know. I'm not sure Golden State knows what they have in him. To be honest, I haven't really seen any change in his game. He's still a lockdown, amazing defender. Um, Did you think he was as good last year? Because I didn't. I think last year. I don't know, the style of defense they played last year wasn't that bright, I don't think, in terms mm. of the type of... I, don't, I mean, you could use him a lot better. And in games where they were playing a premium like scorer and a guy who... Uh, he did a good job stopping them. Just they didn't. It's tough because I think he needs to be able to like influence people in some ways and take away something. And it's just really hard for him when he's got David Lee playing power forward right. and um, Curry playing point guard. And then you have your coach talking about how Clay Thompson is the best defender on your team, which is absolutely absurd, or the best wing defender on your team, which is absolutely absurd. And then they are trying to mix Harrison Barnes in there a little bit. I think he went there and didn't really realize how bad it would be from, I mean, he wanted to leave Denver so bad. Yeah. And then he got there and was like, okay, now this, these guys don't really know what they have in me in some ways. They're, they didn't utilize him properly. What um, do you think, Zach? I think he'll fit, you know, look, the more movement that Kerr, installs in the offense the more sort of side to side action like that's where he's you can't give him the ball and say right. do something you give him the ball when his guys coming back from the middle to close out on him then he can create i mean they had they had periods especially early in the season where he was throwing five highlight passes every game yeah, yeah. because of stuff like that like, look, that's where he fits with them he's not Kawhi Leonard offensively in terms of he's not going to score the ball like Kawhi does. That's just not going to happen. And go to the rim when he right. wants to. But he could be, exactly. But he could be as good a defender and he could distribute the ball. I'm not really caring about offense too much because that team doesn't need him for offense. They just yeah. need him to defend. Yeah. And that's more of what well, that, What's funny is last year they kind of did need him for offense because he was kind of their backup ball handler right. when Curry wasn't in the game. And now I think the Livingston thing, and we all like Livingston. So, yeah. I think the Livingston thing, if he can give them 90 games... I think he's going to have a huge impact on them. And Where, it enables them to do a whole bunch of yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's you know? just so long. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm interested to see how much they play Curry, Thompson, Livingston all together. You know, Livingston can defend a lot of threes. He's skinny against some guys, though. So, right. But, that, but that's like, I like his post game with the shooting outside. He had a killer post game last year, but again, I don't know if he can post, if threes are guarding him. I, I don't know if that neuters that post game. Yeah. It's just something he can use against point I guards. think it's good for him just to be able to bring the ball up the court yeah. and. And then let Curry, uh, Curry play off the ball. Run, and run Curry off picks and yeah, stuff. And Did you see what Jerry West said? Jerry West, who hates everything and is, who, <laughs> by all counts, the biggest curmudgeon who ever lived. He was like, we love Sean Livingston. He was Brooklyn's best player when he started playing. He's the reason they started winning games. Like, he went out of his way to say all these nice things, which I was surprised by. But, I mean, in a lot of ways, he was their most reliable player. I don't think he was their best player. But I thought, no. I, thought uh, I liked them the most when he was on the court. Yeah. You know, at he's, any lineup they had, they needed him out there. It's a real shame he still hasn't developed a, a reliable jumper in some ways. He does have the turnaround post-up jumper a little bit, but he's just not the guy that you can just was, play off him so Were you much. going to those games his rookie year? Yeah. I was there when his leg snapped. Ugh, that, that guy, if you played his career ten times, like seven of the times, I think he's one of the ten best players in the league. Possibly. I yeah. just thought he had all the tools and he could post up and he could see the court and he was fun to play with and... It's just everything about his Clipper experience was horrible. The coaching, the uh, having Sam Cassell there, and Sam Cassell had an ego, and you could tell he wasn't yeah, yeah. totally helpful. And <laughs> Dunleavy he really liked him a lot. Yeah. I, I know that. So I actually recommended to the team that I was working with, the owner that I was working with, I actually recommended them when he got signed to like a 10-day to Washington. Oh, really? I was watching them, whatever, it was like 2010. I was watching them play because for whatever reason, I, we had a lot of action on Washington. I was like, you got to try and sign Sean Livingston. I got like a one-word reply. He'll never be healthy ever. And, wow. I, and, then, and then he basically hasn't got injured since. Wow. So until just now. That shows, that shows how. And you could have got him for a league minimum. Oh, yeah. He signed for the league minimum. You, do we all agree that Steve Kerr is going to be an upgrade for Mark Jackson? 
Or yeah. is it like a we don't know yet? Because I just feel like everything he said, how smart he is, the fact that he basically ran a team in Phoenix, and it's not like he's never coached. It's not a Derek Fisher situation no. where coming in cold. I think he'll be an upgrade for sure. I think he's going to be good. They were 12th in offense last year. The team with that kind of passing and shooting should not be yeah, it's impossible. 12th or 13th yeah. in offense. Well, what I like about Kerr is he knows what he doesn't know. Like, he's not walking in there like, I'm the brainiac revolutionizing all this. So, like, I need Alvin Gentry. I need Ron Adams. Like, I need veterans around me so that, you know, I, I, and, and he's like, their defense was like number three or four last year. And yeah. he's like, I'm not, I'm not going in and trying to revamp that. Like, I know what we have defensively. Let's just do that. Do they still again. have that other guy? Or what is his name? Erman? Or do you get fired? Is he's it, in Boston now. Boston now, yeah. yeah. Ron Adams is a pretty good pickup for them. He's a good defensive coach. He yeah. did a real good job with OKC. He did a real good job with Chicago. He's been around some really good teams when he's been the defensive guy. Would you have traded David Lee and Clay Thompson for Kevin Love? Um, yeah. If I knew that Kevin Love would resign, yeah, I would. It's, it's going to be interesting if that becomes one of the subplots this year because I think Kevin Love's going to be unbelievable in Cleveland, especially the first month, and I think there's going to become a moment when people just kind of look around and go, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, well, Golden State could have had him with Stephen Curry. and like that's just really? I mean, even if you don't think you're going to win the championship with that trade, your team just becomes so exciting to watch. And it becomes yeah. it just becomes such a marketable team if you just want to look at it from, from a business standpoint. I think Clay Thompson is a good player, and I think he has the ability to be even better than he is, obviously. But I just don't care about David Lee. Like, I'm not like, oh, no, we're trading. Like, I would love to be able to trade for David Lee. For a year. No, that, yeah. that trade is Clay Thompson for Kevin Love. From yeah. Golden State's perspective, exactly. David Lee is. And when you look at it that way, it's, of course you make that trade. You know how many players? You, those are the number, those are the easiest players to get, by the way, Clay Thompson-type players. I mean, I'm not saying he's that, like, he's, he's mediocre or he's average. He's above average. He's a good player. But those players come out of college Very every easy. year. Yeah. They just, that's what they do. They come out of, you know, point guards and twos are the easiest players to replace. Powerful. Like, Kevin Love's a, an amazing power forward. I've seen him in person probably 10 times, Clay Thompson. Really solid player. Yeah. Very good. Won't be telling my grandkids about him. No. But I, I remember seeing Kevin Love in person. And I remember going to the arena and being like, Minnesota sucks, but I'm excited to see Kevin Love tonight. But you saw the other team score a lot on I Kevin did. Love, which is what Petra That was part of the Kevin Love that, experience. That's, that's ultimately why they were. They Who didn't. cares? Is there, teams are scoring more against David Lee. It's like <laughs> he's a defensive that's true. upgrade, a huge well, defensive upgrade. Well, wasn't like they didn't want their two best players to be below average defenders? Yeah, they, they had this vision of like, what are we going to do when teams run a pick and roll with Curry's guy and Love's guy and we're just toast? But really, the guy behind that is Bogan, and that's what matters right. more than anything else. I tell you what, when you're the other team is pulling the ball out of the basket every time, you become a pretty good defensive yeah. team. It's very easy to play defense when you have to, when the team has to get the ball out and fly. My whole thing was, I, under, I wrote a whole column on I understood why they didn't do it. Like, I understand why it's a, it's a maybe a harder decision internally for them than it appears to us because of the way Klay Thompson fits on that team and makes up for some of Steph's defensive liabilities. But at the end of the day, like, it's Kevin Love. You just get... Like, get Kevin Love is the answer to the question. Just right. get him. Yeah, and then figure it out from there. The other thing is I'm not sure if Clay Thompson really has that drive. He doesn't strike me as a guy who really – I mean, maybe it's just he's reserved and maybe it's – but he doesn't strike me as – I mean, he's disappeared in a lot of games. And I, and especially in the playoffs, he's had some good games, but he's had some games where he just looked like he was kind of overwhelmed. I think well, remember, just, what was his personality. What was the clips – who did they have on him? Darren Collison in the playoffs, and they had uh... – Redick, and it was like I just being at the game and rooting for the Clippers to advance because I have season right. tickets, and I'm thinking like, if they figure out that Clay Thompson has Darren Collison on him and all these other schmucks that they're guarding right. with, like he he should have 40 points in this game. Well, the they thing can't is, stop him. He, he some, wasn't even getting the ball. That's good, but they also he, did, he had some okay the, games. The Clippers, the Clippers also made it very very clear that they didn't care who scored as long as it wasn't Curry. Like game one especially, yeah. they just took Curry away. I went to game one, sat courtside. Or whatever game it was. I guess it was the first game. Yeah, game one. And um, would Curry score like, like, like single digits or something like that? Um, yeah, he made. I think like two field goals or something. Yeah, like that. and I mean, Clay Thompson in a game like that should be scoring a lot of points. I mean, that that should be a game where you like you like Curry as your MVP, like deep recon sleeper at like I think he's like thirty to one, thirty five to one. If if gambling were allowed, and I. Would gamble like By LeBron. Way, gambling Le is allowed. Gambling is allowed. That's true. Okay. Uh, well, not for us because we have MVP ballots. But LeBron's even. LeBron out. is going to win the MVP bargain unless he gets. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. If you have an NBA ballot, I guess gambling probably yeah. not allowed. Yeah. LeBron's going to win the MVP. But if you give me a choice of like, who are the sleeper other candidates? I I think Curry is like Curry's clearly the best player on a very good team, and like Blake and CP3 are going to split that vote. 
You know, who else? Anthony Davis. Like, if the Pelicans don't make the playoffs, Anthony Davis is not winning. He's 18-1. Period. Uh, well, the, the best thing with Curry, I think, is I, I went to Game 7. Did you go to Game 7? No. Yeah, Warriors Clippers? Mm-mm. I was in... I was in France. Chris Paul threw the kitchen sink at him in that game. Okay, you, we all know Chris Paul is on a bad wheel, right? Didn't Chris yeah. Paul have like a, a bad ankle or a bad? But he was he w- it was the full fledged Chris Paul experience. And the refs in the first quarter, the refs decided, all right, we're going to let him get away with this. So yeah. it was a lot of shoving and pushing and tripping and all the stuff that he does. And Curry just got his thirty five anyway. And they're sending second guys out at him. And I was really impressed. Like their their whole game plan was to just rough him up. And for the first time I've ever seen in person, he just kind of fought it off and got his points. Yeah, I don't think Curry shies away from the contact as much as people think he would because of the size, because yeah. of the slight build. He's also not that short. Yeah. People think he's short, and he's not. He's, no, he's tall. Like 6'3". Yeah, he's, he can shoot over. The best, did you see the, the Kobe Bryant taken? He was like, I've had enough of this. I'm going to guard Curry in this possession. Did you see oh, that no. clip in the preseason? When was that? Was, this was, preseason? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty funny. There was like a clip where I can't remember who was guarding and, you know, I think it might have, I'm not even sure who, but Kobe, like, pushed him out of the way and was like, I got this, I got this. And oh, God. Got, like, go? right in his face, he just shot a three-pointer. Did he do this? Did he bite the three-pointer? <laughs> he, he just shot a three-pointer right over him. <laughs> and made it and just, like, backpedaled. They're getting an angry <laughs> Lakers Nation friend. <laughs> I know. Uh, so LeBron's bad. even. Kevin Durant's plus 600, which I, yeah. anyone who thinks he's coming what? back in the time that they said he's coming back is crazy. It's, it's always an extra three to four weeks. What's Kevin Love on that? So Kevin Love... Who's one of my uh, under the radar guys? Forty to one. I would take that because you're basically betting on a LeBron injury. You're betting LeBron's out for Either twenty way. games, yeah, and no they matter who, sixty-five anyway. Yeah, I'd see. I think Blake is the best now. LeBron at twelve yeah. to one, but that's twelve to one's not enough. Did Blake come third? But let's say Chris Paul third. plays. Yeah, he was third. He was third last year. I let's had say Curry Chris third Paul is one of those fifty-two game seasons where he's whatever, and Blake puts up like the 25, 12, 5, shoots fifty percent. Conceivable if LeBron got hurt. Blake Ooh. made a pretty amazing jump last year. He was fantastic he last was, year. Yeah. Who was fifth on the? I never who thought. was fifth on the MVP ballot final results last year? Noah was in the. Noah was fourth, I think. Noah was fourth. So then Blake was third. Harden or Howard, maybe or Curry. I think it was a Houston guy. I had Harden. Third. Excuse me. Harden's thirty to one. Harden could never win an. MVP. Dwight is a good. Dwight is a good. Dwight's thirty to one. Sleeper MVP candidate. I think Dwight. So you're buying the Dwight comeback year. I mean, he was really good last year. No, I mean, he was awesome back in as the playoffs. Come back as a really, superstar. Yeah. How about in the Portland People forget, like, he was a, because they lost that series, yeah. everyone is, like, painted with the brush of, like, oh, my God, we totally broke down on that Lillard three. This team's a disaster. He was a monster in that series. Yeah, he was really, really good. He had a block on Batum late in the last game with, like, 90 seconds left in a reg- I think it, that game didn't go to overtime, right? It was a regulation. Mm-hmm. But whatever. With, like, 90 seconds left in the game where it looked like Batum had a clear lane to the basket on a pick and roll. And Dwight, it was like Orlando Dwight came from the foul line and just pinned it on the glass. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, oh, my God, this guy is looking good. Yeah. And then he farted. Um, I think the only series that the wrong team won in the playoffs last year was Houston-Portland. I think they played that series ten times. I think Houston wins six or seven of the ten. Not with the same coaches. Oh, I like what you did there. Yeah. I mean, I it's just like that Jeremy Lin game was so stupid. They should have won that game. And then game six, Lillard hits an amazing three. That's going back to Houston game seven. Yeah. You know, they just, Parsons falls asleep for a split second. They run the greatest play possible. They get a really tough shot, but it was a good shot. I don't think play. that was, so I thought that was Parsons too. But wasn't there like, um, was they were supposed to switch. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. And I wasn't, was it Harden? That Harden was, was yeah, also Harden. involved. Yeah, Harden, a big surprise. Wow. Harden but see, was, but that's matchups, right? Like LaMarcus was a nightmare a nightmare for them. Like they had you there to have Dwight on them. They put it like Ashik was suddenly starting in that series after yeah. not starting with Howard the whole year. Like I, Aldridge, maybe t- to... You know, the detriment to maybe a bad move by Kevin McHale, I think maybe panicked because they didn't have a good matchup for Aldridge with, at power forward, and they just like rejiggered everything. But that's a, that's what the playoffs are. Like. I was shocked they brought him back, but I think he had a big hand in the Dwight Howard signing. Who? McHale. They should have signed. I, I mean, you put should've... Stan Van and you yeah, put him in Houston, and then would have. But been. maybe he wouldn't want to coach Dwight Howard. No, I think he would have. Coach of the year. You'd rather like... coach Brandon Jennings and Josh Smith. I mean, the only thing he's got going from Detroit is he's got he's in charge of personnel, but that's like a. I'm that's predicting a that comeback year for Brandon Jennings. He's the worst. <laughs> I think he shot. What he's he? on my all point whore team too, he especially shot. when he plays in L.A. He's a joke just when go, he plays in L.A. Just it. It's an absolute joke. It's like watching like the Drew League or something. He comes Maybe to MSG and he does the same thing in New York. Except he, likes he actually arenas. shoots well at MSG. Yeah, but it. I mean, he's usually. I don't know. I'm not a big Brandon Jennings. Fan. Pop is your favorite at plus three fifty. 
For what? For Coach of the Year. Then it goes David Blatt, Doc Rivers, Tibbs, and Steve Kerr is 10 to 1. And then after that, Some it new gets a little wonky. Uh, for new coaches. like a, Not like a brand new coach, but a coach at a new team. Like maybe Stan Van Gundy might win it. Mm -hmm. Where's Stan? I don't even see Stan Van Gundy. Ooh, 50 to 1. There you go. That's a bad. I don't know. That place, I wouldn't be too but if you go making bets at that place, and I'm probably going out of business offering 50 to 1 on that. If you go for, if Stan Van goes 47 and 35 with Josh Smith and Brandon Jennings, he's got to be in the conversation. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. If they're like a four seed. Yeah. Who's your Eastern Conference sleeper this year? Last year, Charlotte kind of came out of nowhere, and nobody saw that coming. Is there a team like that this year? Uh, that face says maybe not. I think it's a Atlanta. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm driving. I love the. I drive the Atlanta Hawks bandwagon. They're good. They are good. They were good. They were. By the way, they were good until Horford got yeah. injured. Yeah, Horford is really, really good. <laughs> really good. So yeah, I like that team. I think that's the like people ask people ask me that like who's the big surprise team? Like I think I don't think there's like there's not going to be a Phoenix this year. I don't think there's a Phoenix or a Portland that just like comes out of nowhere and is awesome. I just somewhere in Sacramento, the owner of the team thinks that that's the surprise team. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> someone over there thinks that's, that. We wrote about this. That's one of the interesting stories to me is like he, Vivek really thinks like we have two guys on Team USA. Like we're we're running they're out of their minds. Stavskis? Didn't they just <laughs> didn't they hire they hired a guy though? They hired Dean, Dean Oliver. Oliver. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean that team is just like. They're they're going to be bad, and I don't know what happens. That like bad team with unreasonable expectations by the owner is like an explosive combination. I just don't know how you go from Isaiah Thomas to the two point guards they ended up with. At the very least, like you upgrade in some way, and there's expensive point guards out there they could have pursued. But I don't understand how Darren Collison and Raymond Sessions are the answer. Darren Collison's terrible, <laughs> um, but here's <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Here's the thing. Uh, that's weird, is that they have so many knuckleheads on that team, right. and they didn't like Isaiah Thomas. Like, if Rudy Gay and Darren, whatever, uh, DeMarcus Cousins come up to me, like, you know what, we can't play with hmm. with Isaiah Thomas. I'm not like, oh, I got to listen to these guys because yeah. they know but what they're doing. They, they, they these made guys happy. so many transactions based on who DeMarcus Cousins likes. Like, they got Patrick Patterson because he's like the DeMarcus Whisperer from Kentucky. Yeah. And they had to trade him to get Rudy Gay. But, like, yeah. Isaiah Thomas is gone I think. I mean, I think we can read between the lines. He's gone because DeMarcus Cousins is like, this guy has the ball all the time. Yeah, and I don't yeah. like it. Yeah, DeMarcus we can Cousins, definitely read between the lines. Yeah, I mean. You like Cousins more than you did. I mean, I think he's an amazing basketball talent. Look, yeah. he's probably the most gifted big man in the league. Yeah. Uh, but he's just, he's in, you know, he's got problems. Uh, there's some people just don't ever, like, if you, I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's that's Be just, careful. We're pro boogie on the BS. I'm a pro boogie, too. But you know what the thing is? It's just, like, some people just have tempers, and some people yeah. just flap the handle. Like, you, when a guy freaks out and does something so ridiculous, and then you see the look on his face, like, he can't believe that people, like, when he doesn't think he's doing something wrong, that, to me, is, he's like, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's weird. The bad thing about him is that he's kind of screwed because the refs don't like him. And, and when that and that when that happens, that never comes back. And then now you're trying to be the good person. Like you may have very well changed. Like you could go around and be ever. Hey, look, I'm a different person. I don't think they care. I mean, refs don't forget when you show them up. And he just has a bad reputation. He doesn't get the benefit of the doubt ever. But he's and not. We saw that with Antoine in Boston. It passed the point and never came back because yeah. he was calling the refs, "Hey, 21," yeah. instead of their name, which is like the all-time ref no-no. And the key, like, if you don't know my name, I hate you. You're never getting a call. Yeah, and I think the key thing with him is that he's not of the personality type to be like, I know they're not going to give me a fair shake and I'm cool with it. He's going to be like, why well, have aren't these guys giving me a fair shake yeah, he's a martyr. and just go nuts? He's a martyr. He's going to go absolutely insane. So I predicted it as part of my 33 crazy predictions for the season that he would make the all-star team. And even in my prediction, I was like, I really don't think this is going to happen. And I got <laughs> messages from, so the Kings went to China with the Nets and a lot of NBA league office people for those two China games. And that when that piece came out, I got several emails from people who are in China like, that will never happen. I have never been around a worse guy in the NBA. That's interesting. And and it's like, okay, yeah. I guess I guess that prediction is <laughs> going to be wrong. He almost punched a guy in the FIBA World Cup. Did you see that? Uh, Valanciunas. Yeah, he almost like he, Valanciunas. Like, he, he like literally cocked and was going to punch. I mean, that's just the guy has a temper. And that I mind less. So than like, like, I'm not listening to either of you. That 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 I mind less than like just the bad mouthing of teammates. When I, whenever something goes wrong, it's just like oh. And the showing up too. Like he that, and that's my the one thing I can't defend the showing up on right. the court. And you didn't run a play for me, and I throw my hands up and I stalk down the court. Yeah, he's that, the stalk, he's he's. Yeah, so he's, the over under for them is thirty and a half. That's 
a good that's a good line. It's a good over under. All the over unders for the most part are pretty good. This they do well one that job. isn't is Atlanta because we all think they're we'll better have than it it's forty two. Yeah, they'll probably win one. They will win one. That's a games. forty-four to forty-five, unless Horford blows out his labrum for the third time. I like that. Yeah, yeah that's a good, good one. Over. But uh, I bet you the vig on that has changed. I bet you it's not an even money bet. I bet you it's like forty, whatever, forty-two minus one sixty to the over by now. I got minus one fifteen on this one. I don't think people bet NBA over unders unless they're people like you. They go to Vegas and do it. Yeah, I don't bet NBA over unders season win totals because it's just... I always like doing a couple because then I like just in the back of my head watching the league pass. Yeah, yeah, just be like, oh, I have. What's their... Toronto's? 48.5 or something? Toronto is uh, 48, which seems a, 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 a wee bit high. Phoenix is 44, which I thought was interesting because I don't see why they'd be worse this year, but apparently Vegas. No Channing Fry is big for them. Fry. Yeah, so he's worth five wins because they won 49 last year. Yeah, but they also ran exceptionally well to win 49 games last year. I mean, they probably didn't rate to win 49 games. What do you think the Knicks are? I don't know. What do I think they should be? Yeah. What do you think they should be? They're like a 500, a little bit 500 team. What do you think? I was going to guess 41 and a half. 41. Yeah. Do they not do halves? Am I just, is my knowledge no, they do halves. halves sure. Okay. Yeah. Miami is 44 and a half. Under. See, to me, that under. is like a, a lock. At least put the money in the under. Yeah. And you can go against it the last couple of weeks. But uh, Memphis, who uh, Grantland's own Danny Chow. Who is is he's one of our basketball our youngest basketball writer twenty three uh, was started as an intern Obnoxious. works behind the scenes Dante Exum's biggest fan yes uh, is our international advocate Memphis is his rogue title sleeper oh wow yeah that's not he gonna thinks this is dear you don't see it possibly I don't know I mean if you had to pick a team in the West who would you pick I mean I would pick I would pick Oklahoma City or the Spurs but I would pick the Spurs. But I think it's basically like a sleeper. I would pick, like, yeah, that's it. I mean, the trade's the trade's thirty six, by the way. Over, over. Give me yeah. that over. I can't see Stan going thirty five and forty seven. I'd like to see him go like thirty three wins and just like watch his face get redder and redder every day. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to watch. He's he just wears his emotions on, on his. So face. here's my case for San Antonio, which we're, I'm going to make again on the Grantland basketball show on Thursday. I think they climbed the mountain last year. They filmed the sports movie. They redeemed the wor one of the worst losses in the history of basketball. Greatest possible story. It ever, the way it unfolded, everything is just perfect. There's just, you know, went from point A to point B. Kawhi breaks out. Just everything goes right. That rarely happens two years in a row. Especially for an older team, and especially with the luck they had with those guys, with they, you know, they, Duncan stayed healthy like throughout the playoffs. Ginobili was as fresh as a daisy in yeah. June. Parker never had the ankle twist that he had in 2013. It's really hard to get those breaks year after year. I'd be surprised if everything went their way again. Does that make sense? You're, just, you're, you're, you're. Uh, My I think is, we both I, disagree with you. I, I think. Yeah, the, yeah, that's I think fine. the thing is, there's going to be a time when they fall off, and no one's going to really see it coming because you just expect them to be really good. But I think they've, they've, even the guys you mentioned, like Parker, Ginobili, and Duncan, you can make an argument that those aren't even really. I mean, they're. They're, they're so their players are so interchangeable in some ways. Right. Nobody can kill them. Yeah, not any one injury, and and those guys being healthy isn't isn't an accident. I mean, they had the lowest load Great of point. any. So when he was like, "Oh, they ran really good and they didn't really have any injuries," but guess what? No one played more than thirty minutes a game either, and they played not only did they not play thirty minutes, no one played seventy games or seventy one games. So when you're they're getting breaks, they just understand the schedule. We talked about this yeah. on the podcast that we did, um, and it was actually interesting because I. I said they were going to be fresh in the finals because of this, and yeah. it turned out to be true. They, um, they looked like, compared to Miami, they looked like they like they, the Spurs looked like they had just started playing basketball a month before the finals. Right. Compared to Miami, yeah, Miami. I mean, well, Miami's big mistake was they should have arrested Wade more during the season. They should have arrested LeBron like, some. Yeah. No, was, you guys missed my joke. No, I was a joke. <laughs> I was going to say what. <laughs> she set out twenty eight games. <laughs> I was going to say what. So, but the Spurs. So here, here's the thing with the Spurs. They did have. There was like a twenty game window during last season where they had a bunch of guys that were out. Like Splitter was out for a handful of games. Yeah. Why was out for a handful of games? Parker was out for a while, and they survived because of exactly what you're saying. But they also like. They're just. It's amazing to me that other teams are not rushing to do what they do, and maybe it's because they have so much depth. But like, remember Tony Parker after the All Star break was just out with the variety of maladies like right. the Spurs, yeah the Spurs will just do that like he has a variety of maladies he's out for a while and that, well, that, that's like, just called we're resting him it sounds like Blatt's gonna do that with LeBron 
be in the, He's hinted at, like, he thinks it's a 70-game season for LeBron. So that's a function of two things. One, they're ahead of the curve, and they understand this stuff. Um, the other thing is they ha- Popovich just has autonomy to do whatever he wants. If you're a new coach and you're on, like, a three-year contract and you're arresting your players— I mean, look at the owner of the Phoenix Suns went— crazy because they rested players during a preseason game. Right. Like, he, like some of these guys, some of these owners and managers are, are just irrational. So if you try to explain to them, no, we can't play our guy that we're paying $17 million a year because they would just be like, well, he's getting paid $17 million a year. He needs to play if he's not hurt. Whereas so I think Popovich has the knowledge and also the ability to follow through on what he wants to do because he's, not, he's got so much autonomy. Whereas I think a lot of the other coaches don't have that. I would like to see Doc do that with Blake and Chris Paul. I think even if, well, Chris Paul missed 20 games last year, but even if he's healthy this year, I would still yeah. ease him. You know, you can have, you'd be a, hey, Jamal Crawford, guess what? It's your lucky day. You yeah. get to shoot 30 times tonight against Milwaukee. I'm resting Chris Paul. And, I, enjoy that. and Blake is somebody that I worry about a little like we used to worry about Dwayne Wade in the last decade where he just takes a lot of hits, you know, and he gets a lot of hard fouls and he lands awkwardly. He's always in the so, air. That Always in the air. Tough. Guys are elbowing him and cheap shotting him, and he gets hammered. Gets hammered. He does. Yeah. It's amazing to me that fans like if you if if he has one of those like scrums where like he gets fouled really hard and like there's a brief moment where he looks angry and then like the teams come together and then everyone separates. The fans on Twitter like blame people hate Blake. They blame him for everything. I'm like that dude gets hammered. Yes. All the time. The whole like, career too. It's, yeah. it's been ever since the alley oops that first year. I think that just put a. Put a little spotlight on him. People, well, league. people loved him until he was overexposed on TV. I think when he got that on, there's too much stuff. People see him and then they just get, they just irritated by it. I think. I think that's. Yeah. Just, it's, and the irony was he he improved the most other than Anthony Davis of any player last year. I for sure. From. Yeah. People hate everything that's good. That there's like eventually people just hate everything. I just hate everything. So. Yeah. People just hate but, everything. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm a big Blake Griffin fan. He's so, awesome. Blake Griffin is. So the Thunder. Lose last year for a variety of reasons. Uh, Serge Ibaka, yep. that didn't help. Um, they were playing Derek Fisher in crunch time. Maybe didn't help. Karan, uh, Bu- Karan Butler. They had Karan Butler out there. They had the Jeremy Lamb experiment did not go well. Um, then they go into the summer. and uh, What a great summer for them. Anthony well, they Morrow. They picked up a lot of pieces, didn't they? Anthony Morrow, <laughs> a D-leaguer, and Mitch McGarry. Yeah, they just really filled out that roster nicely. How would you feel about that summer? I don't know what the deal is. Like, is, is there no money in fracking in Oklahoma City? Is that the problem? They, made, just 30, make more they money? made $30 million last year. But I mean, estimated, estimated. Profit. Well, yeah, the company is, I think they're, I think they're doing, they could spend more money. They're only $2 million under the tax. And, like, we, get, we reflexively say things like, oh, the team building, and they're only $2 million under the tax, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, you got, you got a chance to win the title, you right? You should be going now. over. Listen, if you want to own a basketball team, move it from a big market to a small market. Yeah. Okay? Right. And you have that team with those players that are like generational players, once in a generation type players, and you aren't spending. I mean, people can make fun of Steve Ballmer all they want during those pep rallies and going like a maniac. Yeah. I'd, you'd rather have an owner like that who recognizes, look, you don't have to spend when your team is not that good. It makes it probably makes sense not to spend at all, like stand under the ceilings, just do the yeah. minimum and build. But you have a good team. This isn't the time to be... I mean, we have a better than. I'm not a team. huge. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not a huge. Stan, I think Stan Presti drafts very well. Sam. Sam, whatever his name is. Stan Van Presti. Stan Van Presti. <laughs> I think he's. I knew it was Sam. Presti. I, I think he drafts well, but I don't know. I'm not. I've never been a fan of like a trade that he's made. Really. Well, that's not. I mean, the signings are not him. Like he's smart enough to know if we want to get Pau Gasol, we realistically have to offer the. How about just? Exception. How about just? How about just trading away? I mean, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I'm, I guess maybe. I just thought they well, blew it. So in June, they had two first rounders. They had Perkins, who was about to meet an expiring. They had a couple other contracts. That was their chance to get somebody. Yep. And to be like, even if worst case scenario is Aaron Aflalo. Right. Be like, all right, at least we got him. At least we know that guy can play in the last five minutes of a playoff. Yeah, I think he, I think if Presti were here, I, think, I don't think Sam, I don't think Aaron Afala moves the needle for them. Definitely I think that's what he would say. Needle oh, no, I, I'm saying any, that's... They don't have any players who can defend at the three. They just need somebody who's competent at the end of the game who can play for them as their fifth guy. Because they didn't, they didn't like have it last year, that's why they lost. Like the Morrow signing at all? Just no defense? I mean, Anthony Morrow's cool. Like, he's a good player. He can shoot. <laughs> he can shoot. But 
But who do they have to guard the other team's? You need a player right. that can guard the other team's best player. And be, it was Derek Fisher and Karan Butler last year. Yeah, they're week. banking a lot on, like, DeAndre, DeAndre Robertson, Perry yeah, 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 yeah. Jones the third. Possibly. Like, I just haven't Come seen on. enough of those guys. Even if they had Perry Jones the first, it wouldn't be enough, <laughs> let alone Perry Jones the third. It's interesting. They're, they're almost treating it like the Patriots treat football, where they're saying, like, well, the, you know, we just want to go 11-5, and 12-4 and four every year. And right. We think these second, third, and fourth rounders can fill in here. You can do that in football because you're paying 22 guys. Yeah. But in basketball, all that matters is your five guys in the last six minutes, ultimately. Yeah. All this other stuff's window dressing. It's like you, eventually you've got to go five on five, and your season's going to be on the line, and who's that fifth guy? And I, it, it's weird that they would think Anthony Morrow is the answer to that because I don't really remember him ever having a basketball moment that was relevant. And we had in our back and forth in League Pass, I sent you his, play, his playoff game log. Zero games. Never played in a playoff game. He's like 29. Yeah. So he's ready. He's ready. He's, he's ready. really ready he's to win his whole life. He's been waiting his whole life. But, and they might make a trade. They got Perkins expiring and whatever, but uh, it's possible. Um, I mean, the, they, it's a to, shame. They'd have to take it back. Well, here, but they, they, here's the thing. It's like they've been saying for years that we'll pay the tax when it's time to pay the tax. Well, I, I would say right fine. now is it's, the time. Durant's yeah. 26. Westbrook is 25. Like this I is really the hope Durant leaves. I, that's like, I do too. I'm rooting for that so I do too. I'm I said that like a long Those time ago. Those owners don't deserve him. I kind of really want, want to push my chair just away from the table. And Why? Why? Zach doesn't like conflict. Makes it, he gets awkward. Okay. We do, but where is he going to go? Well, we don't. We don't. go anywhere. Look at Zach. So. <laughs> Where's he going to go? I just, it's, Where's he going to go? <laughs> I just, I mean, I. You have Durant, who's one of the best players of the last 15 years. So who deserves who and deserves? You're cheaping him? Do, the, do the Lakers deserve him? Just spend do the, the right Wizards amount of money. deserve spend him? Spend the money one year. Just well, spend the money I mean, one year. They wasted the 29th pick of that draft on draft a guy who went to the D League right away. How many draft picks did Ernie Grunfeld blow in the top 20? And now they're going to they're going to lock him. He was trying though. The D League thing was a disgrace. Go to the D League. We're we're giving away this pick. <laughs> we're not going to use it. Yeah. For all this talk, for all this talk. They may, if they had Westbrook two seasons ago and Ibaka last year not get hurt in the playoffs, they may have a ring. Like they may have, they may have won a title by now. I don't know if it's likely or not, but like they were two two with the Spurs after Ibaka came back, and Spurs send money to spend money though. They do. Like I mean, if you flip, they're under you, the they're under the tax too. Spurs don't do anything wrong. But they went. No. They paid tax a couple times. Though. Yeah, when they they and that's the historical spending pattern is exactly what you just said. Teams yeah, build spend, up, build up, and then you spend get spend when you have to. You Sacramento can. paid the tax when they had the the height of the Divac Weber. Celtics team. paid the tax like four yeah. or five straight years. By the way, the year Oklahoma City beat the Spurs, you could make an argument that that team. The Stat Spurs team was one of the best teams in the last 10 years. I mean, they you were know, they ran off, that? like, all these wins. Do you know how I know you can make that argument? Because it's in my archives after Game 2 when I called them one of the great offensive teams of all time. Yeah. And they never won another Well, and that's game. what I'm saying. Like, yeah. for, all, for all this, like, if, they, if Ibaka were healthy at the right time last year, that team is a problem for the Spurs. They're a yes. problem for San Antonio. I think, I think the Spurs would, would admit that after having a few years when, where they got the wrong break at the worst possible time last year, but, so they, but, really but well. they were a problem when they had the team that they had, when they had Harden, who was another offensive right. weapon. They're not a problem They're anymore. They're a very different team. This is, yeah, you get rid of I mean, as, as bad as James Harden's mocked on for defense and all this other stuff, he's getting to the free throw line. He's picking up. I mean, that Oklahoma City team lived at the free throw line in large part because it's Durant, and Harden, and Westbrook draw a lot of fouls. They're three of the top five. And also, crazy. The line. and also, we don't need to re-ask our Drake as we do it all no. the time. But, <laughs> we but, can't like, help it. but that's why you keep him. Those injuries yes. are why you keep him. You don't just say we have four of the best guys. He's redundant. I mean, you, they you, which, is, which is true until one of them gets hurt. I mean, that was such a joke. That trade was such a joke. They picked. They really thought that they could replace him. A team that goes to the finals thinks they're going to replace. Well, him. the other problem is Kevin Martin. It was also a lack of understanding of how the league works because injuries happen all the time. And to just say like, "Well, we can do this," and then everything else will be, the, all the other variables are fixed variables. Like you just never know. Derrick Rose goes out for two and a half years, you know, and that's basketball. I mean, they clearly have a no tax mandate. I mean, it's, it's got to be coming from ownership. You, you can't pay the tax. I don't know when that mandate is going to be lifted, but the cap and the tax went up so much that they could have kept Harden at the max and paid the tax in just one season. They could have amnestied Perkins. They could, that's what I'm saying. It would have required amnestying Perkins, which cost money. Which they should have done last year. And then, and then that replacing. Was just, and then, that was, that was a, a straight, straight out money. Straight out thing. cash thing. Yeah, that, that, yeah no, you're under the, you don't pay the tax, but yeah. you've got to pay him, and then you've got to pay his replacement for the minimum. It's a $10 million price tag. It's going to be tough to replace 
Kendrick purchased. No, I'm was saying like that, that's Oodle. why I said like the, minimum, <laughs> yeah. the minimum. The minimum. Uh, I'm saying it would have cost money, but they could have done it. They could have paid the tax just one time. And I don't know if they knew that if they if they projected the cap Zach, to jump like this. Come but, on, Zach. There was a the difference between making twenty million versus making thirty. Yep. And they decided, you know what? Yeah. And now it's like if you don't have Perkins on the roster for for last summer with the rest of the team they had and all the other options they had, now they could have really gotten somebody. If Steven Adams is not starting over Perkins in the playoffs, I have, he's actually I, a pretty good player. Steven Are Adams? we sure he can play twenty minutes? He fouls a lot. He fouls the crap out can of him. Can he over. play can he play thirty minutes in a playoff game without fouling out? No, I don't. I'm way. just saying, if he's not starting over Perkins by right. April, I may not be able to watch a Thunder game in the playoffs. It, it, we may get to that point. You probably won't be able to watch a Thunder game because you'll be. It's going to be the Russell Westbrook show for a while, and that's going to be interesting to watch. If you're a basketball purist, you're going to be like, "What is going?" You're on? You're anti Scotty Brooks, right? Of course, I think he's terrible. <laughs> I guess that would be it. <laughs> Sorry, I, didn't mean to, I mean, I'm not a fan of Scotty Brooks. No, I'm just think he's. I mean, it's, he's a really nice guy. He seems like he's a, one of those that you always have through the squad. Right? Like nice guy, dude. When he when Great they guy. lost to Miami, that speech he gave at the end and the interviews he Great did at speech. the end were amazing. They were awesome. And if I Fantastic. had a kid and I didn't want to raise him, I'd by all means I'd pick him to raise my kid because he seems like a great man. But I wouldn't want him making decisions on what to do and what not to do on a basketball game. I just wouldn't want that. I don't think he's smart at, at that part of the game. I think he's a great people person. He's a great man. He's probably a great leader. But he's just not. The question that's interesting is, is he the coach as long as Durant says he's the coach? Like, do they ever just have the guts to say? If they disappoint in the playoffs this year, do they have the guts to say, look, Kevin, I know you love this guy, and I know you're a free agent in a year. Like, he's not the guy to take us over the top. Like, that's a fascinating dilemma to me. And then the extension of that question, what coach has taken that Oklahoma City job for one year with the knowledge that a year from now Durant yeah. might be on the team? Everyone? Everyone. One-year flyer? For, first of all, you don't sign a one-year contract. These guys are going to get paid No, but regardless. it's like if you had options, you'd be like, could, I could do this, Durant, for one year, and he might Dude, be gone. They could have taken... I could take Houston with Dwight Howard and James Harden. I mean, I think that there are so many good assistant coaches. The idea of these coaches that have already been head coaches, there's very few of those guys who are actually still good. There's very, I mean, you want to hire Mike Brown again, you're going to hire, like, but, but the guys were like the assistants. Could Mike Brown get hired a, a fifth time, fourth time? It's amazing, right? It's absolutely amazing. But, but, but you could have, like, someone who was, you know, on Pop's bench or, like, you know, Buttonholes or I don't know about the guy in Philly. I'm not really 100%. He seems like he knows what he's doing. What about hey, me and Zach, if you saw our celebrity game performance? We were a disaster. How about, we couldn't how even get our rotation organized. Well, Snoop Dogg kind of ruined our plans. We didn't, we didn't get that we couldn't have Golik and the, the supermodel on the floor at the same Who's time. Who's the that supermodel? Was the Aaron Heatherton. Nice. Aaron. So we had Cavs minus 300, Spurs 350, Thunder 7-1. Bulls plus seven fifty, Clips ten to one. I would, I would think the. Then it jumps to Dallas twenty eight to one, Golden State twenty eight to one, Houston thirty five to one. That seems high. Yeah. Wiz forty to one. Then after that, I would say Dallas and Chicago are going to be teams that all have a legitimate chance to go far. Um, I like Dallas too. Dallas, I mean, it just depends on how much Tyson Chandler has left and how much Dirk has left. Contract here for Tyson Chandler. I don't think for him he needed a contract here to play good. He's at that fire to begin with. I just think it's whether or not he has the physical, like he's Bob, been banged a lot. A contract here always helps. I guess so. He seems like he's got a lot of fire anyway. Puts a little hop in your step. And he likes, it, it helps that he likes Dirk and he likes Carlisle. Like he's been there. He's won, he won there. a championship he loves, there. He loves those guys. Jameer people Nelson. People play for Dirk. Like people play for those like, you know. Jameer Dirk's Nelson the most decent, up, the decent point guard for them. Dirk bad. and LeBron, most beloved teammates. That's the finals, right? Duncan? Is Duncan in? Duncan over either of those two? I don't know if enough of the league knows Duncan. I mean, Steve people Nash love has Dirk. to be a pretty good team. I don't Nash think up. I've ever heard anyone say anything bad about Well, Steve but I, I was talking about guys who could actually, like, the, carry still a luggage. franchise guy. <laughs> yeah, carry their own luggage. <laughs> I think uh, those are the two. They might be. They might be. Yeah. Dirk, I don't think Dirk has ever played with somebody who wouldn't rave about him afterwards. Yeah. And I Nash know. is like that, too, obviously. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Memphis is like 50 to 1, which would be the other... If you're going super deep. If you're under the premise of Spurs and Thunder aren't making the finals, so... I Memphis is possible. They're healthier this year, and they... Ben, Vince Carter's actually a really nice Vince, pickup for them. I like that. Vince Carter was arguably... Not arguably, he was Dallas' second best player last year. Yeah. Vince Carter was, has been... 
He's been I, good for a while. He made the Hall of Fame last year. Even I can't no, fight it anymore. I mean, I wrote this two years ago. He's a no-brainer, Hall of Famer. The, yeah. fact, the, the, the idea that he wasn't going to make the Hall of Fame is crazy. Like he's, well, but you, the last, but he, I still had to be one over Zach. He is now the poster boy, though. For, still, for, seriously, for the next 15 years, he's the poster boy for reinventing yourself as a different kind of player. Well, like I don't player. think I think he's the best. I, is there a better guy that's done that? I mean, Kobe can't do it right now. No. Um, I, I guess the Spurs have this. Would you say system. Ray Allen is a candidate for that conversation, or was Vince Vince's A game was better than Ray Allen's A game? Ray Allen was Ray really Allen good. Ray Allen has really a natural good. skill set. Like you knew he, when he aged, like he can age off the ball really easily. Like you knew that he could age into just running around screens. I don't Ray think Allen's you knew that. Bucks, about Vince. Were you betting on basketball in two thousand one? Yeah, I've been betting so on Ray basketball Allen's, since ninety eight. Aren't the two thousand Lakers your your? Uh, That's how I got my jump. Yeah. yeah. Oh, because the Ray Allen's Bucks team that would have made the finals if the officials didn't decide to make every game eight out of five for the Sixers. <laughs> that Ray was, Allen was great that season. That was that goes. He down. knows what I'm talking about. That was the That's most, the all-time most uh, crooked one. It was really crooked. Yeah. The but, free throws are like I think I think Philly shot like <laughs> I think they shot like 120 more free throws or something. More. The seven game series, more. I think f- there are three different games where Bucks people got fined after the game. Yeah. That's, Carl got fined. Oh, I remember Carl getting fined. You got I had a whole, whole YouTube video of it because I actually wanted to look at that recently because I remember thinking. It's on there. Because people always talk about the the Sacramento Lakers series, but the that Bucks was worse. the last one. Yeah, yeah. That was worse. And they were better too. And that's the team that in the finals, I, as good as the 01 Lakers were. That Bucks team would have been an interesting matchup. For they would have got crushed. Yeah. Well, they would have. It, they would have done better than the Sixers. Right. But I mean, any the Lakers were so much better were, than any. And the Sixers team. did the best against the Lakers. That the, they were the only team that took a game off the Lakers. Yeah. In OT. That, yeah. yeah. The, the Toronto Lakers getting stepped over yeah. by Allen Iverson in Game One. That's the best playoff team since the MJ Bulls, I think. That 0-1 Lakers. Yeah, team. definitely. That was the only time they had Kobe and Shaq running on all cylinders. The ultimate, together. ultimate flip the switch team. They were the worst regular season team, I think, of that Lakers group, yeah. and they just were they didn't like, oh, even have home court here. versus the Spurs yeah. in the second round. They were the they were they were below the Spurs, but they they yeah they turned. The they also had injuries. They had, yeah, injuries. they had injuries. That came, Fisher came back. They actually didn't. Just, they turned it on when Fisher came back um, with like two or three weeks to go in the season. I actually, people know about the year before that I made a, a big bet because that's yeah. where I got my start. But when the playoffs, like 10 or 13 days before the season started, or the playoffs started, is when I made a big bet on the Lakers to win. And then I basically bet the Lakers, like, every game of the playoffs. In and I, 01 or 0 the, Oh, the, the year that they won every game but one in the playoffs. Something 16. you will presumably not be doing in the 2014-15 NBA season. The, yeah, no. They won't make the playoffs. That's so what were your other great gambling moments? The best gambling moment was the... Golden State Warriors versus oh, Dallas yeah. Mavericks. Oh, yeah. I was in on that one. That was 11.1 to 1 was my average. That was my best gambling moment. Wow. And the funny thing about that is I had a guy who owed me, a poker player, owed me a lot of money. And I was like, yo, buddy, you should bet on this. You should. This is a good bet. You know, you put like 10000 down on it, whatever, twenty. But he was a big better anyways. He's like, no, nah, I'm putting... I, I, to be honest, I really like Dallas. <laughs> he was going to lay like 20 to 1 on Dallas. If you're out there, E-Dog, what's up? My best, my <laughs> trilogy is is that with that 07 Warriors team, 04 Argentina in the right. Olympics. Yeah. It was, it was 10 to 1. Those are the, the ones. The yeah. only time I've turned against my country. And then uh, the 95 Rockets against the Magic. They were like 4 to 1 underdogs. Everyone was like was, riding uh, the Magic and Shaq. That was the Nick Anderson one, yeah? Oh, yeah. All my good gambling moments were favorites. when I was 15 years old. I bet all my Knicks, I grew up near Knicks in Connecticut where everyone is a Knicks fan, southern Connecticut. It's ninety. Was ninety three the Smith stuffed year in the conference finals? One of the, the Knicks, great games. Ever. When the Knicks went up two zero, yeah, yeah, that was game five. Game. I bet all my friends, and these are like ten dollar bets, right. that the Bulls would win. And when the Knicks were up two zero in that series, like every day I was getting trash talked. I was like, just wait, just, just wait, MJ. just wait, and you'll appreciate this. Ninety five. I bet. Now I got odds, and I don't remember what they were, but I bet essentially that the Celtics would beat the Magic in the one eight series that year. I was like, oh, and it was the a Garden, the last sneaky, day of the Garden, com- sneaky competitive wow. series. They were up. They lost the first game by like forty, and the next three were close. Yeah, That's pretty impressive. I went to those last two. I lost all the bets though. But however they worked, I lost. But I was like, it, I was completely irrationally confident that the Celtics were going to win that series. Dominique Wilkins was heavily involved. It was. Well, you, your other great gambling moment was the uh, the lockout season when it came back. What were you doing? Going over the whole time? No, uh, uh, unders. Yeah, that was a good gambling moment. Um, yeah, that was a good gambling. That was we just that was probably my I like. I mean, we didn't do as well as 
The unders were way off. The over unders were way off, right? They were Teams like were like points too high or something. Something like I don't remember. It was, yeah, it was, that was a good year. That that was there was like something weird about the lockout season. I think that not very many people picked up on. But you picked up on it. I did pick up on that. So I went back in my memory bank to the previous lockout when I was living in my brother's basement in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I went through. <laughs> I went through the data. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So in 2016-17, when we have a 35 another season, lockout, yeah. yeah, that's happening. That's when I'm, I'm 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 out there as a lockout optimist. I've already written it. I'm out there. I've, lockout optimist. I'm a lockout. I didn't know optimist. that was a corner. I I'm I'm cautiously optimistic that we are going to avoid what I, I think we could. I think we could not miss games. I think there's too much lockout. money for them to to really. Adam has already started. Adam Silver has already started going to owners very quietly and being like, if things are going well, like let's not be idiots. Let's not like threaten this i'd say things are going well things are things are going great like i'm like there might be a there might be a lockout or a strike but i don't know if that necessarily will mean miss games it might be resolved quickly enough that if you were a billionaire how much would you offer new orleans for with the bensons for the pelicans if i was how much money would i have to have let's say you're worth five billion bucks right five billion yeah and you want an nba team and you feel like you can get you can steal the pelicans away from benson um what, how high would you go to have Anthony Davis to be Anthony Davis's owner for the next twelve years? I don't personally. I don't believe in owning human beings. But well, what, Anthony Davis's C- <laughs> CEO. I, I don't know. I would probably spend a lot of money on it. I, but I would you go over what the sticker price was? Yeah, I would bid for sure. I mean, first of all, the sticker the the, the bucks sold for what five hundred million? Five seventy five. Five seventy five or five. You'd have to probably pay a billion dollars now. I, I would think for a team. I think the Pelicans are worth what, Zach? Like seven fifty, eight hundred. People would think. We'll see what the Hawks go for. I mean, that's a tiny market by NBA. But so is Milwaukee. Well, I'd go a billion because Davis is the next guy. Yeah. We'll you see what the I Hawks just want go the next for. guy. I, yeah, yeah. Davis is a wild card. I was talking to. I think you can put value on that. I, was, I would do it just so I could fire Monty Williams. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably pay an extra billion for that. Zach's like the only one of the few pro Monty Williams guys. I kind of like Monty Williams. I can't explain why. Like, first they had a good defense. Well, the last time they had a real team, they had good defense. Like, you know, 2011. I don't agree with him. Hornets. He's terrible. He, he draws up some some Are fun you out stuff. Of your they mind? all end in bad mid range shots. And he has clock management problems down the stretch of close games. I just, I want to see what he does with this team. He draws up some cool plays. I'm a sucker for people who draw up cool right, plays. We'll give him 20 more games, and then you have to. They're all on the line this year. All the those only, guys, front office, coaching staff, if they're bad. The then only they're... thing Anthony Davis is worse at than coaching that team is picking out his game day wardrobe. Mm. That guy has the worst suits of any coach. Monty? Monty Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the good thing for all of those people is that the Saints are kind of in a potential free fall in the NFL and the Bensons, that's all they probably care about right now. So they won't even notice what's going on with the Pelicans until January. Um, yeah, I'm not a Monty Williams fan. I'm, I don't know. Maybe I'm too hard on some of these. You like players. Brad Stevens? You're definitely too hard, but so am I. I like Brad Stevens. I like, there's a lot, like so I'm going to talk about all the coaches I like. I like Brad Stevens. I like Budenholzer. I like... Um, that got a heavy nod from Zach. Sneaky coach of the year game. Popovich. Oh, yeah. For sure. I'm going to like David Blatt. I'm positive of that. Beat the, all of us love David Blatt. We've never seen him coach an NBA game. I watched him coach some, some YouTube clips. Yeah. <laughs> some, some clips. Uh, I'm probably missing a bunch, but those are... Carlisle? Love Rick Carlisle. Uh, I love Rick Carlisle. I really do. Yeah. He's a great coach. He's in my top three. We like Stan Van. I like Stan Van. We like Hornacek. We forgot to mention him. How yeah. can you not like him? Yeah. Um, Quinn Snyder is going to be interesting. I don't know if we're going to like him, but I think we're going to enjoy watching it's hard for him for me to 30 get, games. Yeah, it's hard for me to get like the, the 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 stuff that went down, like all the articles about him, like ordering pizza and his <laughs> picking it up in his own, like just all the bad right. things that happened. It's like I can't get that out of my mind because he just looks like a frat boy in some ways. And yeah. then you read the articles when he was in, when he was like, there was like those articles where he was like, you know, accused of this and accused. It's hard for me to get that out of my head for some reason. But oh, sh- Jacoby, how much time do we have left? We didn't do Byron Scott. I need two minutes. The whole point of this podcast was Byron Scott. <laughs> right. God has created a nemesis for you on Twitter. I mean, we started talking about it, but we forgot to go back to it. So Byron Scott has come out of it's like unfrozen caveman lawyer in SNL, where it's like <laughs> <laughs> he comes out. He's like, I don't understand your advanced metrics and your corner threes, but I do know one thing. Yeah, he's and running, that's Byron Scott he's running the NFL version of the wishbone, basically. Hmm. Uh, the NBA version of the wishbone. Yeah, I'm not a big Byron Scott fan. I can't tell if this is just a giant 
like you said, performance. Do you feel like he's trolling you? Like he's ready to Twitter? Like there, there's no. this guy, Bob on <laughs> I'm not Twitter, sure and I'm, I bet like I can said, make him snap. I don't, I don't think he has internet access. Oh, that's true. He doesn't have email. internet access. I don't know. And you know the funny thing about is you have to go back and watch the Lakers post game stuff from last year when D'Antoni was the coach because he was on the panel. Oh and yeah. Listen to him and James Worthy and the other genius that they had on there. I don't even know who he was, but someone can let me know. And listen to those guys, and then I want to see what they say now when their team goes out there and takes, like, four three-pointers a game. And, and the, a lot of 20-footers. No, he's just to defend a team who just basically says, we're not going to shoot three-pointers. Like, that's the one thing. You can say to your team, we're not going to shoot three-pointers, but don't tell everyone else you're not going to shoot three-pointers. Well, but, wait, it got worse than that, though. He's like, I just don't think threes translate to the playoffs. No, they don't. Except for the time <laughs> Except for the when, last, like, five yeah, games. Yeah, except for all the championships. Every team that's ever won. Except for every championship. Dating back to the Houston Rockets. <laughs> yeah, 2000, whatever. Yeah, Byron um, Scott is going to... I mean, he might be in for a rude awakening when he... I mean, Kobe, I think has decided that it's okay to shoot three-pointers. I think that that happened in their last exhibition game. He was just like, yeah. you know what? I've had enough of this. I'm yeah. going to start shooting three-pointers. But I don't know. I don't understand. I can't tell if it's if it's if if he's being serious or if it's just like... Oh, no, he's being serious. Uh, how? That's like saying I don't, I don't, I don't believe in, in... But it's that whole... Ge- it's this whole generational thing. It's like the people are like, I don't understand this. He's not that old. Oh, but nobody's going to watch TV on the Internet. He's not that old. People watch TV on TVs. Like, that's that's... He is that old, though. He's over 50 now. Okay. He doesn't get this whole... What, three-point shot? Yeah. Seems absurd to me. Yeah. He's not been watching basketball for the last... Like, three is... like what did he... What, does he know that you get an extra point for it when it goes in? Three, that's what the line means. Three right. is more than two. It's absurd to me. And then, and then, and then he's like... We're gonna we're gonna focus on like what's the big deal? We're gonna we got the mid range game and we're gonna we're gonna foul a lot on defense. Is it he wants to foul out or not foul? I don't even understand. He, he, he wants no easy baskets. It's gonna be one of the worst defensive teams ever assembled. Yeah, they're, they're gonna, gonna be a lot of easy threes. Baskets. They're gonna give up seventeen threes a game, but make one. That's gonna be so. Nick Young will come back, right? So he'll get one more. Try sh- telling he'll that get guy. a shooter back. So right, there's yeah. one shooter. Try telling yeah, try that guy he's not allowed to shoot threes. He's yeah. just gonna take long twos. Yeah. It's not like he's gonna go to the basket. He loves <laughs> he's take long he'll take loves a long two. Oh. The Lakers are just, they are a performance art project right now. Between that and, like, everything Kobe says now is, like, a cartoon character of Kobe. Like, this, the, all the F-bombs he's dropping about Julius Randle the other day. Yeah, it's he's, like, Kobe's it's, acting really he, weird. By the it's way, he's crazy. the other guy that you forgot to mention and all the teammates love playing with him. Kobe Bryant, wasn't he on Jamie on your list as well? Yeah, there's what? been, man, I can't, just can't think of one. Right. I mean, even Pal left. Pal still likes him, though. Pal's got, like, a Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, Pal. 100%. <laughs> Pal, 100%. you got to work really hard to make Powell not yeah. like you. <laughs> like, really, really, really hard. Well, it was funny reading past quotes about how he was attracted to Chicago because of the culture, and he was excited to have a new experience. And I'm thinking, like, well, I guess Oklahoma City was never really in this then. No. Because if, if he was looking for this big, worldly, big city experience, it was going to either be the Knicks or Chicago, right, from how he was talking. But, but Oklahoma City really thought they were going to get him. If they offered more money, maybe they would have. I mean, they're mm-hmm. they're competing with the tax mid-level exception against the real mid-level exception. That's like, you know, almost double. This is Chicago's real chance to win a title this year because they've got... Cleveland's going to figure stuff out. Yes. It may not be this year, but they're going to figure stuff out. And Chicago's got the pieces. They've got a healthy, you know... I um, think... But, I mean, they got healthy players aside from Derrick Rose. Like, they've got, like, Gasol. But then if Derrick Rose can somehow, just going to be tough. But if he can somehow get back to, like, maybe 80% of what he was before he got injured, um, they've got a great coach. I think they'd take 80%. For sure. Yeah. He looked Locked real good. In right now. Last night he was tremendous. He looked real good, yeah, yeah. last night. I mean, he was being guarded by Kyrie and Deladova. Chicago has, Chicago has... Everyone they signed in the offseason, Miritich, Gasol, McDermott, they drafted. Like, they have a bunch of great like second and third options. Like the yeah. really good second and third options. They just need the one guy to break the defense down. Guys, you have to think about. Oh, we have to go. All right. So you can check out Haralabob, uh, Twitter at Haralabob. Uh, okay. That's your Twitter That's account. That's me, yep. Haralabob. Haralabob. That's Bob Valgaris. Yep. Thank you for joining us. It was a pleasure as always. Zach Lowe, we will see you Thursday night. ESPN, 7 p.m., the Grantland Basketball Hour. Don't think we're not dragging you on that one, by the way. Would love You'll be to making a I'm not sure. I, I could be like the new season. Jimmy the Greek. You could be. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Why minus, now? Minus the, minus minus the, the racial reason. missteps. Yeah. <laughs> you got to wear the chains like he did. He used to wear great chains. That'd be awesome. All right. That was fun. Thank you. You're welcome. 
target to set off. Whoa! Thank you for downloading the BS Report with Bill Simmons. Too much fun. Check out more podcasts at the iTunes Music Store or at PodCenter at ESPNRadio.com. Peace out. Got to say, Gola, great call on grabbing Subway for lunch and getting guacamole on our subs. Told you this new guac really amps up the flavor. Yep, something adding up. Things can be great. Guacamole on your sub, a new co-host to replace you. What was that? Oh, no, nothing. Subway now has deliciously rich new guacamole made from ripe Haas avocados with just a hint of garlic, onion, and jalapeno. Discover how new guacamole turns up the flavor on any of your freshly made favorites. Subway. Eat fresh.